Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Gibson has not really helped themselves in the last few weeks. There was the really poorly conceived Play Authentic video, the trademark lawsuit with Dean, Dean's counter lawsuit, the Firebird X destruction video. Now while your perception of Gibson as a company will definitely factor into whether you actually want to buy a new one, I'm going to do my best to try and focus on just this guitar for the review. And full disclosure, while I'm not at all in agreement with how Gibson management has handled this PR shit show, I am a fan of Gibson Instruments and Les Pauls in particular. Context is important when it comes to reviews, so up front, that's where I'm coming from. I'm a fan of Gibson guitars overall. We'll talk about this one though. Now the Les Paul Modern is the flagship model of not just Gibson's new modern collection, but of the entire relaunched lineup as a whole. At $2,800, it's the most expensive non-custom shop model that Gibson currently offers, and according to the website, boasts, quote, contemporary updates not found on any of their other models. But is it truly a modern take on the Les Paul, or is it just modern by Gibson standards? Might have just given away my take on this guitar already in the intro, but whatever, let's take a closer look. First off, I want to give a shout out to Eduardo Benvenuti and the rest of the awesome patrons for making this content possible. If you want to directly support what I do as well, you can join the Patreon community through the link in the cards and get some awesome bonus perks. Now the Les Paul Modern is like a continuation in the spirit of last year's outrageously priced $3,400 Les Paul Standard but at a much more attainable price point. Although at $2,800, it's still a reasonable investment. So just how modern is this Les Paul? Now, first off, the build quality is excellent. As soon as you pick it up, you'll notice it has a very premium feel. After all, it is the flagship of one of the most iconic guitar companies in the game. In terms of wood selection, it sticks to the tried and true. It's got a mahogany body with a maple cap, a mahogany neck, and an ebony fingerboard. The body does have Gibson's ultra modern weight relief pattern, though it still comes in at roughly nine-ish pounds, which is about the same as the non-weight relief Les Paul Standard 60s I demoed recently. The finish is kind of interesting. The one I managed to pick up from Sam Ash is in a finish called Graphite, 
but it also comes in sparkling burgundy and faded Pelham blue, the last of which is my personal favorite. You can't tell from the stock photos on the website, but the finish actually has a slight sparkle. I'm not even sure you can tell from the B-roll, it's so subtle. From a distance, the sparkle is basically unnoticeable. Unless you're in direct sunlight, it just looks like a normal finish in like a pencil lead color. The back is really nice though. It's just a natural gloss, so you can see the grain of the wood, and it looks great. One of my other favorite looking Les Pauls, the 2019 Deluxe Player Plus, also had that kind of two-tone body with a natural back, so it's cool to see it here as well. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm a big fan of the transparent top hat knobs. I think I would have preferred speed knobs though. These ones are kind of sharp, and if this were my guitar to keep, I would hammer the top hats down for comfort. Chrome hardware, no poker chip on the pickup selector, it's a pretty sleek looking guitar. I mean, at least in my opinion, as a giant fan of Les Paul type guitars. That being said, I'm not sure why they went with such a conservative sparkle for the finish. It's kind of like a weird theme with this guitar. It's almost like Gibson was scared of making the Les Paul Modern too eye-catching and stopped short of having it really make a visual statement. Like it's nowhere close to what ESP does with its sparkle finishes. I mean, for better or worse. The inlays are very cool though. They're actual mother of pearl instead of plastic pearloid that you see on most guitars in pretty much all price ranges. They look phenomenal and they're super colorful in the light. Now while at a glance the modern may just look like a Les Paul with a sleek finish, there are some things going on under the hood that set it apart from a classically specced Gibson. Here's where you see a lot of the desirable features from last year's standard come into play. We've got an asymmetrical neck profile, so it's skinnier on the treble strings and thicker on the bass strings. It's definitely a little more comfortable than a uniform neck profile, and it's pretty subtle. Like, it doesn't take a lot of time to get acclimated to, unlike the Strandberg warped rectangle. Then we've got a compound fingerboard radius, a rounder 10 inches on the lower frets to a much flatter 16 inches on the higher frets for the Shreddy McShred treads. The frets, though, are the same medium jumbos found on the original collection Les Paul standards. At least they're listed as medium jumbo, they're actually quite low and narrow. It makes the medium jumbo frets on even my Player Series Tele look absolutely massive. They're not stainless steel or even cryogenically treated anymore, so only time will tell how long they'll last without a refret. It's just kind of a weird choice to have tiny nickel silver frets on a guitar marketed as modern. I don't know, maybe I've just been playing my Chapman too much. A feature Gibson has been touting for this model is the modern contoured heel. To be honest, it's pretty underwhelming. It's better, but it isn't that much better for upper fret access than a normal Les Paul, and nowhere near as elegant as what other contemporary brands like Solar or Chapman or ESP are doing for their set necks. Overall, it's a quicker player and it still feels very much like playing in Gibson, but with a compound fingerboard radius and a cut taken out of the neck heel. Like last year's Les Paul Standard, the modern has Grover locking tuners. Always love locking tuners for the convenience. The rest of the hardware is classic Gibson, aluminum stop bar tailpiece and tunematic bridge. We've got a Graftech nut. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like my high quality nuts. They're great for tuning stability. For $2,800, Gibson have made sure to include a hard case. It's the classic brown Les Paul shaped case, nothing to really complain about here. It looks classy inside and out, and more importantly, offers great protection for your almost three grand investment. I will admit though, for the modern, I was hoping they would include something a little more modern. There's nothing wrong with the classic case, but it seems like a missed opportunity to introduce a new contemporary case for the modern flagship model. Inside the case, we've got a nice Gibson multi-tool, a leather strap, the completed inspection card, and a picture of the actual guitar on the QC bench. Standard Gibson stuff. There's also the poker chip, which you can install yourself if you prefer that look. For pickups, Gibson has included a pair of burst buckers, a pro rhythm for the neck, and a pro plus lead for the bridge. The two volumes are push-pull to split their respective humbuckers to sound more like P90s, and then the push-pull tones can be used to either switch the phase or bypass all the other controls completely and go direct from the bridge pickup to the output jack. Missing from last year's standard are the dip switches, so you don't have that absolutely ridiculous number of tonal options and customization, but at the same time, you don't have the associated option paralysis either. So here's what everything sounds like through the Marshall DSL-100H. <laughs>
To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the Burst Bucker series of pickups, but in all fairness, they aren't really made for my style of music either. Now these are wired in using Gibson's Quick Connect system, so no soldering in the control cavity. That being said, it looks like you can just cut the connections if you want to replace the pickups with, say, Seymour Duncan's, as long as they have four conductor wiring. Alright, conclusion time. The Modern's kind of a weird one for me. Credit where credit is due. This is a fantastically built guitar, take nothing away from the craftspeople that brought this Les Paul into being. If the spec sheet appeals to you, go for it. However, as a Les Paul fan, I like it, but just not as much as I thought I would. There are a lot of cool ideas, but it seems like there could have been more follow through. It's almost like the modern is held back by the brand name on the headstock. It's more modern than the Les Paul standard 50s and 60s in the original collection, but for me, in terms of features and feel, it falls short of being a truly modern guitar. It has a compound fingerboard radius and asymmetrical slim taper neck profile, but at this price, it has tiny frets and they're not stainless steel. And burst buckers, it seems like an old school choice. It would have been cool to see Gibson introduce a completely redesigned pickup line for contemporary players. The contoured heel is a step in the right direction, but it looks more awkward and more of an afterthought than what ESP and Solar, for example, are doing. I know authenticity is Gibson's thing, but there's no shame in borrowing some contemporary inspiration from other brands. So if I were to describe this guitar in one word, it would be underwhelming. There's nothing technically wrong with it, but it's not really that exciting either. The modern kind of feels like a middle ground compromise between what contemporary and classic players want in a Les Paul, and I could be wrong, but I'm not sure it satisfies either. For the purists, the Les Paul standard 50s and 60s are basically exactly what they've been asking for. And for the modern players at $2,800, there are so many options for 21st century single cuts that have more elegant playability solutions and more interesting finishes. And at this price point, it's going to be hard for it to convince anyone who isn't already a Gibson fan to pick it up and give it a chance to win them over. In my opinion, Gibson played it too safe, to the detriment of the Les Paul Modern, which, as the flagship of the Modern Collection, could have been so much more. But hey, I'm just a YouTuber, and as the internet keeps reminding me in the comments, what the hell do I know? So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. These are, of course, just my opinions, and I'd love to hear yours, so leave them in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available, and to Luke for mixing everything. Social media, Discord, and merch links are down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.